There's some interesting research out there that ice cream might actually be good for you. There was a 2018 study where among diabetics, eating half a cup of ice cream a day was associated with a lower risk of heart problems. A 2002 study that found overweight people who enjoyed a, quote, dairy-based dessert that mainly consisted of ice cream saw dramatically reduced odds of developing insulin resistant, si resistance syndrome. And an observational study of dairy and of dairy and type 2 diabetes from Harvard in 2005 that found men who consumed two or more servings of skim or low-fat milk a day had a 22% lower risk of diabetes. But so did men who ate two or more servings of ice cream every week. So why isn't anyone talking about this? According to a fascinating article in The Atlantic, the findings have been all but buried for decades by scientists who, despite the evidence, just don't believe it can be true. Joining me now is journalist and public health historian, the man behind that article, David Johns. Um, explain what's known as the ice cream conspiracy. Okay. Um, I, I would say it almost started as a conspiracy in my own head as I became aware <laughs> of these um, kind of strange findings, these, this mis mysterious effect that had popped up in the nutritional epidemiology literature. And to be clear, this is a correlation, right? This is, a, it's something that's popped up kind of repeatedly in a bunch of epidemiological studies, you know, observational studies, um, suggesting that there was a connection between ice cream and reduced risk of diabetes. And it was like, how could this be true? This sounds like something that's like, you know, or there, there's this kind of almost joke that like dietary advice is all, all is like flip-flopping, right? Yeah. This was like an almost, to me, like an almost too on the nose, like, you know, manifestation of that. And I was like, could this be real? So I was like going through the data and trying to like, is this possibly real? And as I followed it long, you know, followed, read through the literature, I thought, actually, and talked to experts, they were like, maybe this, maybe there's something. You asked there. yourself if you were high on your own ice cream supply, which was a memorable line. Yeah. Let's talk about the data. How good is the data? How reliable is the data? Is it just like offshoots from other data that they found? Or why have no studies been done on this? Well, studies haven't been, like, they do these big studies where they look at, so there, there became, at like, at the beginning of the so-called diabetes and obesity epidemics, which were sort of designated in 2001, there became an, a, a much greater interest in dairy, right? So dairy foods, we traditionally, like, lumped them all together, but actually, Actually, there's a bunch of different foods, right? So people started doing these observational studies where they follow populations of people over time, looking at a whole range of different dairy foods to see, like, okay, does this correlate? Which, how do they correlate with different, you know, uh, health effects? How, which, what, what could be a diet that might prevent diabetes, that might prevent obesity? And different things popped up, right? Ice cream popped up, yogurt popped up a little bit. The ice cream signal kind of like accumulated over time, and it basically like was looked past we'll say we'll, we'll say that like it it, it 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 didn't kind of fit with it didn't make any sense right so so the people who were con conducting these studies didn't kind of uh give it a lot of publicity so while i love the ice cream angle of this part of the reason i really want to talk to you is because when we're talking about science it's it's not it's not 100 percent and it's run by people and people might have their own preconceived biases that they bring to it like anyone does. And there's a quote at the end of your piece from an English epidemiologist um, from 2004. And he says, scientific findings do not fall on blank minds that get made up as a result. Science engages with busy minds that have strong views about how things are and ought to be explained that. Yeah, exactly. So, like, you know, you have a whole scientific literature that's built up over time. You know, you have a history of, uh, so, so, you know, the dietary guidelines, their, their track record, right? We had the low-fat era, and then it changed a little bit. So there's, a, there's, there's both a kind of the beliefs of scientists that they've gotten, that they've, um, you know, accumulated in their own heads about what, what is healthy for you and what is not as healthy, healthy for you, and the kind of institutional kind of interest in maintaining credibility, right? If all of a sudden you turn around and you say, actually, you know, maybe ice cream's okay, right? That doesn't, like, that doesn't track with anything they've said before, right? So the bar to, like, accepting this signal that was kind of popping up in the literature, it's going to be a pretty high bar of evidence, whereas yogurt, People thought those, those two signals were kind of of equal strength, and yogurt was like, okay, like, you know, yogurt, maybe that's okay, right? That's my interpretation. I'm yeah. kind of reading the tea leaves about how people responded. Um, yeah. I know it's still questionable, but <laughs> I, I do think that we should maybe enjoy some ice uh, cream just because why not? Just I'm going to believe it. That and a glass of wine. Cheers. Thank you very much yeah. for coming on and giving.